Hello, this is the Provoke Prawn, and this is MSI's Meg X299 Creation. This is an unboxing video where I'll be showing you what's in the box, what you get for your money, why this is an interesting motherboard, and the problems I've had with it. I'm going to do a separate video to talk about the various problems I've had with it and how to fix them, how to get around them. But this one is a purely sexy unboxing of a great looking motherboard. Now I have also done a more in-depth view of close-up shots and the final installation so you can see what it looks like when it's installed. But I thought it'd be worth covering off the product itself and what's contained in the box, or at least the majority of it because some of the bits I didn't use in the usual fashion. Before I get started, it's worth noting that the MSI X299 creation is an Intel Core X powered motherboard. There is a X399 version, don't get those confused because that one's AMD. This is a very capable motherboard with a multitude of different inputs and it's power hungry, but it has the power to support quad channel DDR4 RAM up to 4200 megahertz with eight DIMMs. It also has, as you will see in a bit, four PCIe slots allowing you to SLI up to four graphics cards, which is just mad. It has unbought storage for three M2 NVMe drives as well as an expander, which I'll show you in a minute. So inside the box, you get an SLI bridge, a Thunderbolt card, a Wi-Fi antenna, which plugs straight back into the back, the usual I.O. panels, and all the cable -y goodness. You also get a cool little MSI bag, which has a multitude of different things in it, and it includes screws in tiny little bags for the various M2 drives that you'll be installing. A multitude of different SATA cables, which is good because this motherboard supports up to eight SATA hard drives, which is nuts. And numerous other cables, as well as support for various RGB lighting capabilities. So, interestingly, this motherboard supports directly supports Corsair's RGB fans that you can plug them straight into the motherboard and also a number of other RGB peripherals. It comes with a MSI sticker. It has a thermal cable to connect and keep an eye on the thermals of your case, or certain peripherals. Some more M2 screws. There's a few of those in there, and that's good because you want to install a few different ones and various other cables. It also has a very detailed and useful manual, although the manual itself does say refer to the online manual because it might get more updated. Look, another M2 screw is what you want. And this is one of the reasons I bought this motherboard. This is an M2 PCIe adapter which allows you to install four extra NVMe drives on your machine. That means you can have a total of seven M2 drives is pretty nuts but it does come with heatsink and cooling capabilities and is powered by a six pin PSU cable so it's worth making sure you've got enough cables and it's really easy to set up as well basically there's some screws on the underneath you unscrew those plug in your M2 drivers normal screw them down take off the stickers that cover the heat sink, connect it back up, screw it back in, plug it into the PCI, PCI slot on your motherboard and then plug in the power and the LED cables as instructed in the manual and you're away. Now access to a multitude of NVMe drives is great. I've got multiple ones on my machine I can use for Windows, gaming, video editing, all sorts. It means that the machine runs fast and everything I do is quick and easy. So this is a good reason on its own to buy this motherboard. 
Also, the design of the motherboard itself, as you will see, is really cool. It comes with a really cool look and feel to it. It has mystic light capabilities built into it, it means it's uh, can RGB lighting. And as I said, it connects up the Corsair peripherals so you can get the lights to work across both and synchronize all the lighting. That mystic light also works with a variety of other peripherals, which I believe includes Nanoleaf, which I'm really interested to test out because I have nano leaf panels. If you've seen the videos on my channel, you'll see that I'm a big fan of that. Inside the motherboard box itself, you get some stickers to label up your cables, which is useful. Although I didn't actually use mine. I used a pen instead. But that's quite handy if you want to know the order of fan cables and power cables and such like that. A quick start guide which hopefully you know how to do if you bought a motherboard that costs this much, how to install you, your CPU and other bits. And as I said, a detailed manual and the registration card and all that jazz. The manual also talks you through basic things like installing the M2 adapter, all the BIOS codes, because there's a cool little LED system on the motherboard which gives you various BIOS error codes so you can quickly see by just looking in the case what the problem is and then go about fixing it. This also has a CMOS reset button on the back which is pretty neat and nifty if you get any problems and a dual BIOS system which means you can have two different BIOSes and if you hit a problem with one there's a switch on the motherboard where you can switch to the other one. The main highlights for me, as I said, is the multitude of M2 NVMe slots. Also, the ability to have a mass of RAM with eight DIMMs, potentially. That's a lot of RAM, and it looks beautiful as well, because I have opted for Corsair's RGB RAM, which looks really good when it's plugged in. If you want to see more on that, please check out my channel as I will have other videos both on this motherboard, as I said, fully installed, and also on the various peripherals I've been using to set up this machine. You can see here a really awesome look and feel to it. So if you see on the right hand side where it says MSI and in the top left where it says creation, the Mystic Light lighting, RGB lighting comes on there. The heat shield at the bottom here on the M2 drives is great unless you happen to have a WD black with heat sinks because it won't fit over the top of those. I've hit that problem. Separate video on my channel if you want to see that in action. The side note, the WD black SN750 drives are beautiful, especially with the heat sinks. They look fantastic. However, you can't use this shield on top, which is a bit of a disappointment. The motherboard itself though is magnificent and it has, as you can see, a multitude of options. As I said, being able to install four graphics cards if you have the money is an interesting option. Three M2 drives, you can see here, two WD Black SN750s with heatsink and one standard WD Black SN750 installed. And you can see I've had to take the shielding off at the bottom there and no longer can cover it. You can also see what looks like eight DIMMs of RAM. More on that in a different video is actually four DIMMs of RAM and four lighting replacement kits. All in all, a really beautiful, if very expensive motherboard. It is 500 pounds-ish English pounds that for you Americans. And I'm sure it's probably about the same in dollars. But it is wonderful and it really looks great. This has been the Provoke Prawn. Hope you like this video. Please like, subscribe and come back for more in future. And also check out my channel to see other videos of this build. Thanks for watching.